Hello, everybody. I am uh, up in Montana today, right at the Wyoming Montana border, and I wanted to bring up something kind of quick. Um, some of the new cars that I'm seeing on the market, the URC cars, uh, are running a battery that seems to confuse a lot of people. And what it is is an 18650, and a lot of people think it's some sort of a new battery or a proprietary battery. It's not either one of those things. It's been around for quite a long time. I use them in all of my flashlights. Uh, they, they're a great little battery. Um, I think what's probably confusing people, they're in a lot of the battery packs that we run right now. This is, uh, this is what they look like. Uh, the problem is we've never really seen them as a single cell before. When they're in a pack, uh, to me the bad part about being in a pack is you have to run a balanced charger in order to charge the batteries. I don't know if this is too windy or not. i got about a 15. 15 to 20 mile an hour wind up here today. Anyway, uh, it, we've been running them in battery packs for a long time, but they're they're shrink wrapped as a pair, and you can't uh, you can't really see what's inside the pack. Now that they're showing up as a single cell, it's just, it's a confusing thing to people. They've been around for a long time. I've been using them in flashlights for years. Uh, it's what's in a Tesla car. There's just a lot of them. Car. So, obviously, I can't do anything from up here in Montana. But when I get back to uh, Colorado, I've actually got a little setup at the house, and I'll uh, I'll edit this video and add that in. Show you um, the primary problem with these batteries is that there's probably oh I don't know how many people, but there's a lot of people that are uh, uh, counterfeiting these uh, cells. I'll show you some of the things that you need to look for, what kind of price ranges you're going to be looking at. Uh, the, the thing that I've seen with uh, some of the people that have reviewed the cars is they're wondering if you can get these. I don't you know, can you get a replacement battery? Well, they're everywhere, and you just have to learn which ones to look at and which ones not. So, when I get back to Colorado in a few days, I'll uh, finish this video up. Here's a tiny little clip from my uh, dash cam. So this is what I do for my day job when I'm uh, not doing RC stuff. Just a little side note, you can see 1106.3 miles from up here. Hello, everybody. Uh, as you see, I made it back from Montana, so I'll try to finish this video up today. I was told by several of my friends that this shirt fits me exactly, and I think they're just being kind because nothing really fits me exactly anymore. Anyway, the purpose for the video, a lot of the cars that I'm starting to see are using an 18650 battery as a standalone cell instead of in a pack. We've been using them in packs for a long time, but they've got a shrink wrap on them, so you really didn't know what was in there. Um, and now as a single cell, there's a little confusion. So what I'm going to try to do in this video is clear that confusion up. Uh, hopefully, now I am not an expert, and I didn't stay at the Holiday Inn Express last night, but I've done a little research on these. I've been using them for a long time in my flashlights. They're inside the battery packs of a lot of laptops. Uh, as I said um, in the earlier clip, the Tesla car runs on these things. So uh, I'll show you how available they are, and there are, as I said, uh, counterfeits or less than top quality um, cells on the market. So what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about what to look for and some places um, I'll, I'll try to link to a source that I think is a lot more knowledge than I do and I can't remember everything that's on their site. So I'll include that in a link somewhere on the down in the doodly-doo down below. So let's get started. 
Okay, we'll get this started. Um, as you can see, these are some of the LED flashlights uh, that I used with the 18650 batteries in. Um, I realize I have quite a few flashlights here. I, I, it's not really a fetish. Uh, I, I've been told it's a fetish. I just like flashlights, so if anybody happens to run across my wife, uh, you can tell her you don't think it's a fetish either. Anyway, get my scales over here because that's going to be part of what we're going to do in a minute. If I can get some of that glare off of there. Alrighty. These are 18650 cells and some of these come from a known source and some of them I bought when I first started doing this. They make other size cells. Uh, this one is uh, an 18500, if this will focus. And it's a, as you can see, it's a little shorter than these are. It might make an interesting project for a, a small car or something like that. This one is a, a 26650, and it's uh, quite a bit larger than the 18650s. Now, where they where they get this, they're uh, 18 millimeters by 65 millimeters. The zero, I'm told, means that they're round. I don't know, and I wasn't there. Nobody uh, invited me to the meeting when they named these, but the 18650, uh, 18 by 65 millimeters uh, makes sense. Anyway, get these others out of the way because they're not part of what we're talking about today. Um, you can get all, oops, all kinds of chargers for these. Uh, and this is part of the reason I like the 18650 battery. You don't have to charge them through a, a balance charger. This is the charger that I primarily use right here. And uh, turn this light off. They, um, it charges each individual cell, lets you know when the cells are done, and it'll show you at the end how long it took to charge each cell, and it shows you the current that's uh, currently going into the batteries. So that, uh, and then you can, as you see, when it gets up close to 4.2, it uh, tapers the charge off pretty good. Anyway, and it'll tell you the length of time it took, so you kind of have an idea what your cells are doing. And so one of the things that I have uh, found out after doing a lot of other people's research is that it seems like the weight has a little something to do with these. So they're filled with methyl, ethyl bad stuff. Actually, they're, they're lithium ion, but... Uh, I, it's easier to say the other. Actually, it's not. It's just more fun. So methyl ethyl bad stuff. The more of it is in here, uh, the, the more the uh, more capacity the batteries have. This one, as you see, uh, it says that it's a 2400 milliamp battery. This one looks just like it. I even uh, has a little trademark symbol on it and everything. But it says 4200 milliamp hours. And this is where the weight's going to come in. Just make sure my scale is zeroed. Okay, this is the one that says it has 2,400 milliamps. And it weighs 39 grams. So, it, as it, things go, it's actually not a bad cell. And I, I haven't measured the actual capacity. I don't have the means to do that. The meter hasn't come in yet. But we're going to go to this one. That to, Oops. It says it's a, a 4,200 milliamp hour battery, and we're going to check the weight on it. The other one was 39 grams. This one is 24 grams. Now, an interesting side note here, if I can do this without beating the camera up. This rate, this battery, if you are cell, you know, some people want to call them a battery. Some people get antsy and if you don't call them a cell. I'm okay with either one. That rolls, okay? This one, however, has a heavy side. So what I, and I haven't cut this one open. I will because I don't use it for anything anyway. Uh, I'm told they, they stuff another little battery in there and uh, put some sand in it or something to give it some amount of weight. So I will at some point cut this one open and see what's inside it. Um, back on the other ones, this one, 
uh, says it's a 3,000 milliamp. It's coming in at uh, 34 grams. This one says 3,000, and it comes in at 35 grams. This one says 3,800 milliamps. It comes in at 32. This one says 3,800 milliamps. It comes in at 33. So those are all, even though they're labeled differently, uh, pretty close to the same. And what I try to do, anything I'm running multiple cells in, I try to I will actually weigh the things and try to put similar weights in there. Now, for me personally, um, these work. So it's when I say counterfeit, um, basically what I'm trying to get across is that they're mislabeled. You know, whatever they say, because I've, I've seen some that say 9,000 milliamps, 9,900. As far as I know, um, 3,400. I've heard uh, that there is one company making a 3,600 milliamp, but 3,400 is the biggest one that I've seen uh, confirmed. And so these companies like this, um, this one here, and this won't run my flashlight any length of time. Oops, wrong one. This one will not run my flashlight any length of time at all. It says 4,200 milliamps on there. And um, if I put one, if this one, one of my LED flashlights, it'll run for about 10 minutes and it's done. So I doubt if it's got 150 milliamps. I'll, it does recharge and it does come up to 4.2 volts, but uh, I don't get any life out of my batteries. We're all, in, now here we go. We've got um, everything that's done like this is not a um, a counterfeit. Now these say Westinghouse. It says it's a 2000 milliamp hour battery. But uh, looking at the top on this one, um, I'm thinking that's, uh, I'm thinking that's in line with the Panasonic cell, the, the, the end button. And that'll be in the link I include in the doobly-doo below um, the research that the other guys have done. Now, to show you what I'm talking about here, this one is 44 grams. Here's another one. It's 44 grams. And then I have uh, one of my flashlights is a multi-cell flashlight. And this is how I actually got interested in all this stuff is because one of the things I like about these batteries is they don't self-discharge rapidly. You can store them for a long period of time. Well, as you see in this particular flashlight, it's a, a parallel pack. So what I noticed is I put some of these other oddball batteries that I had uh, cells. I put them in here and I went to use it and the thing was dead. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, it's, you know, it hasn't been that long since I charged it. Well, maybe I'm wrong. So I recharged the batteries, the cells, put them back in and not too long they were dead again. So that's what's going on is one of those uh, cells was way off from the rest. And um, so what was going on is it was discharging the other three cells in the pack. So as you can see, these the, the Westinghouse um, are very consistent in their weight. And so I picked these up at Walmart, and I got actually got them on clearance. They um, and I thought, well, I'll take a chance. They were um, actually in the garden department. And uh, they use them in apparently some of the uh, solar powered garden lights. Now, these that I have over here, I picked up on a suggestion from somebody. These are not labeled at all. So these are, I'm assuming, um, what is it, LG, Samsung, uh, Panasonic, uh, a couple of companies like that. If you stick with their cells, if you get them that aren't counterfeit, then you get really good sales. These have absolutely no label on them at all, but these weigh uh, 45 grams. So I get really good service out of these also. What I will say is that uh, the 18650s are everywhere. You go to Amazon, go to eBay. I don't think I need to pull it up on the computer screen. If you just type in 18650, you'll come up with tons and tons and tons of stuff. 
the link I'm going to include gives you a lot more information than I have. But if you find a reputable source, like I said, the, all of these charge to uh, 4.2 volts. Uh, there, there is another thing that's called a protected cell. And um, just the only thing I've got that has that is this battery right here. Um, and you'll see the bottom of it is copper colored. And there's actually an, a second circuit board or a supplemental circuit board. So these people buy a battery from somebody. Then they add the uh, protection circuit. It's, a, it's an over discharge and overcharge circuit. So if you try to overcharge this, you can't. If you try to over discharge it, you can't. The negative thing with a um, over discharge circuit is it just turns off. And so whatever you're doing, if I'm using a flashlight, and that's the reason I don't use them in a flashlight, um, they turn off. Boom, they're just done. Sometimes you can go to a lower power setting on the flashlight, and uh, it'll run at lower powers. But all this being said, uh, the new cars with the 18650 batteries, I think, um, are pretty handy. And one of the things that uh, I'm thinking about is that uh, the runtime that you get on these and the availability that they provide. I, like I said, I got these at Walmart. You can pick a couple of sets of these things up. So for the cars running on single cell batteries, you just take a few extra sets with you. As you see, there's a variety of chargers. I've got another one um, that looks almost exactly like this one. It's got the flip out plug in the back, but it also has a socket in the end. I can plug it into 12 volts and charge it uh, from the 12 volts. This one, as you can see, it's got an independent circuit for each battery. The other one does too, but it doesn't have the lights. This one actually has lights on it, so it'll let you know when it's done. I'm not including links to any of these because I don't really know exactly where I picked those things up. Uh, the, this one is a night core. I actually picked this one up on Amazon, and uh, I'm, I, they're not a, a sponsor or anything. I just happen to like this particular charger. And there's a, there's clones of this. I don't know if this one may be a clone, but it works well. So um, the 18650 stuff, in my opinion, is great. You could actually even build your own packs. As a matter of fact... Uh, I ran this together. I, I drew that up on my 3D printer, and uh, so I can snap a cell right into that. I've got one at each end of it, and you can put them in this direction, and then you've got a series pack. Um, it, then what I like about it is you can just pop them out of here, and then you can put them over in your charger and charge them back up. So those are just little things. I don't want to ramble too long here. I'm basically just wanting to show you that these cells are, are nothing to be afraid of, and uh, there may even be some advantages to it. You can build your own battery packs if you want to build a pack, if you've got a, a an existing battery pack that's gone down. And you can kind of tell if you look at the shrink wrap, you can see that it's two of those cells inside the shrink wrap. You could cut it open if the balance circuit's still good and they just lost a little of their capacity, or if you wanted to bump the capacity up with some good cells, you could cut that thing apart and resolder all the connections internally. Then all you've got to do is put some more shrink wrap on it, put a piece of duct tape around it. Got a lot of options on stuff like that. Anyway, um, I think that's enough for this video. So everybody have a great day. Thanks for listening. If you know anybody that likes 18650s, likes flashlights, likes RCs, share this with them. Subscribe and I'll uh, and hit the little bell and I'll send. A, uh, I'm going to do some car reviews. I will promise you I'll, I will get to that. So um, when the weather clears up, as you saw from some of my videos, or the beginning of this video, it's a little snowy up here, so not a whole lot of available traction. Anyway, everybody have a great day. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.